So I just built and sold my first $5,000 AI application and I did it with no code whatsoever. In this video, we're gonna break down how I built it, what the architecture looks like. We're gonna go through some of the AI algorithms and just get a fundamental understanding of how it works so that you guys can implement components of it into your builds and you know hopefully get some benefit out of that. Sounds good? Let's get into it. Also, once you've gone through this, at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through a couple of tips and tricks where I'm gonna to link to other videos and just give you guys a couple of little tips of how you can actually go about building something like this in a more efficient way. So you're not wasting your money and you're getting to the final result that you want. So you're not getting frustrated in the process. So definitely check that out at the end of the video. Go through the whole video. I definitely think it's good to understand everything. And at the end, we'll go through some tips and tricks. So what did I build? I built an AI powered skin analysis tool. It allows the user to upload a photo or take an image answer a bunch of questions and then uses AI to analyze all of that together to give them a final report on their skin. We're gonna run through a demo. I have removed all the IP from the initial clients. So no, none of their branding, none of the IP, just from their protection point of view. And I've replaced it with stock media, but the fundamental architecture still operates for a generic skin analysis tool. So definitely think you can still get some benefit out of this. So let's get into the demo. You'll see over here skin smart analysis and it's a basic landing page and you have one button begin analysis you'll hit that you can then start the camera or you can upload your photo in this case i have a photo over here so i've gone to unsplash which is a stock photo website and i've just checked looked to, for someone with a skin condition and we are going to download this image over here and use that right so let's come back to upload photo let's go to our photo over there and let's upload that once that's uploaded analyze skin an ai model will analyze this and then it will ask you a bunch of questions so in this case the woman seems about female she looks 18 to 24 what's her skin tone so in this case she's quite i would say fair type 2 so probably maybe she's probably very fair are you pregnant or breastfeeding and we'll say no and then we'll give her a name. Let's call her Vicky. Say next. And then it asks you a bunch of questions around your skin. So how does your skin feel 30 minutes after cleansing? So in her case, let's say maybe often red and itchy. Do you experience fine lines, puffiness or sensitivity? Uh, maybe she says, yeah, puffy and swollen. How do your cheeks feel throughout the day? Well, looking at it over here, pretty red and irritated. Does your nose get oily or develop blackheads? Doesn't really look like it, so maybe sometimes sensitive. Uh, how does your neck feel compared to your face? Uh, you can't really see your neck. It looks pretty okay. So maybe we can just say occasional irritation. And then it asks you some lifestyle factors. So maybe she lives in a suburban area. She's mostly indoors. Um, average sleep duration, six to eight hours. And say her daily water intake. Maybe she's got terrible water intake, less than a, a liter. So once we've got that, we'll they'll ask for an email address. So in this case, you can just put any email address. So we can do that and the report will be emailed to you. Let's see results. So the AI will analyze here and it should pop up with our final report in a second. Alrighty, so this is our final report and it says, hi Vicky, this is personalized. This is your personal skin analysis. It gives you an overview, so sensitive skin, which I think is pretty on the money there. Then it uses, it does an analysis overview. So for example, the reports of concerns of puffiness and sensitivity align with the visible redness on the cheeks. So it's actually picking that up on the image and then comparing that to the question near answers it also takes into account your lifestyle factors so in this case it notes that the water intake was low um, and this can exacerbate dryness and sensitivity sleep duration is kind of in a good range but typically lower not uh, leads to sufficient skin recovery time and then key observations i won't go through all of these but it does give us a nice little map on the right hand side here that is a nice little breakdown you can see sensitivity is really high for her. Pores are okay. Tone is okay. Hydration is quite low, most likely leading to that sensitivity. And then an analysis accuracy, 85%. This is how accurate the image um, or how good the image was for the AI analysis. So it gives it a confidence, a confidence score. Anything less than 60%, it will ask you to retake your photo. Here is a focus, personalized recommendations, your final profile here. And then it will give you recommended products. In this case, obviously, these 
are not populated because they've been removed. So that's the demo. Okay, so how did we build this? We built this using Lovable. If you don't know what Lovable is, it is a no-code platform that allows you to build AI applications or build applications using AI. So you can basically build applications using natural language prompting. Pop a little demo video up here so you can kind of check it out. And there is a link in the description if you want to check out Lovable. What I like about Lovable, what we used it for in this case, was pretty much everything. So when I say everything, everything can be integrated into Lovable, right? So you build the application in Lovable, you can deploy it using Lovable. From a backend perspective, which moves to our next little block here, is it uses Superbase, which is this application over here, which is a cloud-based backend that supports all your backend. If you know what a backend is, think of it as if you have to sign up and log into your application, it will hold those uh, utils. If you have to store products, for example, with our skincare analysis app, if we're recommending products, we want to store those products, you want to uh, hold those somewhere, you want to store those somewhere, you're going to use a backend, you're going to use a database like Superbase. And the integration between Lovable and Superbase is so easy. You literally just go click connect, you set up a Superbase account, and you are good to go. And you can basically prompt through Lovable to make edits in Superbase. So Superbase was used for our backend. It's a Postgres SQL uh, that's not really, that's too technical, but it's a database that allows us to store our information, file storage. So for temporary image analysis, all the images we take in, we do not store. We just analyze them through our AI, which we'll get into now. And then we basically delete them. And it also serves as our host for our serverless edge functions, which again, too technical, just think of them as AI powered analysis parameters. So it allows you to actually perform your AI powered analysis. Moving down, this is the actual meat on the bones here. AI and image analysis, right? So how do we analyze the image? So we use media pipe for real time face detection and feature extraction. So when we have our image up, whether we've uploaded or taken an image, Media Pipe basically extracts, okay, this is a face, these are the eyes, that's the mouth, those are the cheeks, and so forth. So it will basically give us a nice little breakdown of the, the face. And then we feed that into an OpenAI GPT-4 Vision API, and it's very easy to link APIs with Lovable. You literally say, I want to connect my OpenAI API key, and it will give you a little um, box that you can enter it into, and it saves it. And one nice thing is it doesn't save it in the browser, it saves it in the back end so you connect your api key and you go ahead and perform or well, that will perform your skin condition analysis right so that's an analysis of both the image we take as well as the questionnaire that's filled up by the user and based on that there was a there's a personalized skincare recommendation in that final report that is given to the user in terms of a breakdown of weighting, currently how it sits is it takes 60% of the final score as user questionnaire data and 40% of the final score as your AI image analysis. And I'll break that down a little bit more down here. So what's actually happening when we talk about the AI processing? Because that's our key, that's our main component here. There's three components. So the first one is it analyzes the image. So when you upload an image or take an image, it will use MediaPipe to identify those facial features and then it will so get to a point where it accepts the uploaded image or it says, hey, retake this because this is not a, an image we can use. And that comes down to that confidence score as well. So confidence of 60% and above is accepted. Then it processes it with OpenAI uh, API. So it will basically think of this as ChatGPT. If you upload an image to ChatGPT, you prompt it to say, you're a skincare expert in this field. Your job is to analyze images for um, facial features and skincare features so forth and it's a nice long prompt it will then give you an analysis back so we've got analysis one from the image then we go into number two which is analyze our questions from our questionnaire takes in all those questionnaire data feeds it into an open ai api 4.0 model which does the same thing again it's prompted as a skincare expert to understand things and understand the the, the skincare world and the skincare features and it will, do, it will perform an analysis. And then we've got our second bag of, or our second result of an analysis. And then we've got a third and final one, which is basically saying, hey, take group one and from the facial image and take group two from the uh, questionnaire image 
and combine them using AI, but at a weighting, right? So at a weighting of 60% for the questionnaire and 40% for the AI. And that formulates our final report. So that's the architecture as a breakdown. Alrighty, so as promised, some tips and tricks of how you can be more efficient in Lovable, you can save some money. First thing is Lovable have a new feature. It's called the edit feature. It's down over here. Usually, well, before this said select, this button was said select, where you could select, you would click it, you would select a component and you would be able to prompt to say, hey, make this image smaller or make this title bigger or change the color or whatever the case is. Now you can hit that and you can actually change the image yourself. You can change the uh, scheme and all the UI elements yourself just by moving or selecting colors or, or changing font sizes or so forth. I've done a whole video on this visual edits, new functionality within Lovable. I'll link that right here. Go check it out. That That's definitely saved me a lot because you're not spending any credits when you're doing this, right? So you can make all these changes and then, you know, kind of just spend credits just for that one change, not all those changes. Check out that video. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is I was mentioning from a backend perspective, Superbase. If you're never connected to Superbase, definitely do check this out. So how do we connect to Superbase? Very, very simple. You're in your application, right? And you hit this button, it says Superbase, right? We need a backend. We want to be able to save, sign up, and login details. You have things you want to store. So you go to connect project. In the case over here, you will have, uh, it will just say connect. So once you've hit that, it will take you through to Superbase. You create an account, you come back here, and it will be fully set up and ready to go. And then you can have your different projects, right? So you can hit active projects here, or you can go create new project. It will take us to Superbase, and you can literally go ahead, add in a project name, add in a database password, create the project, and it will bring you to your organization and your different projects that you have over here. You can pause projects, you can keep some projects active, but very, very simple. And like I said, Superbase is an open source or a cloud-based database. So think of it that way. We have a SQL database. This is a PostgreSQL database, but it's hosted uh, online. And from a pricing perspective, Superbase, the free tier is more than you need for now, right? If you're building these out, even for clients, really that's all you need once you know you start going above and beyond. So if we go to from a Superbase perspective, if we go check out pricing so from a pricing perspective you can see the free version gives you unlimited api requests half a gig database size fifty thousand monthly active users it's really more than you need and only if you're using a lot if you're storing a lot of products a lot of information a lot of images maybe a lot of videos you would obviously want to bump it up but once you bump it up to 25 dollars a month you're on 200 you're on eight gigs of, of space per project so definitely in my opinion um, Superbase is awesome and like we said connecting to Lovable is so easy so that's tip number two and then I think the final tip is how do you connect your API keys really really simple right so you just basically go and say I want to connect my Gemini so say Google's uh, AI Gemini API keys you literally just prompt it you just ask it you say hey I want to do this Alrighty, and then Lovable will prompt you with basically this and they'll say, they'll give you a little button where you can add API key. And in here, you can just see, park your API key, pop it in there and submit it and it gets saved in Superbase in the back end. You don't have to put anything in your browser, nothing's exposed and it's that simple. That's API keys. One final tip that I'll give you guys is how do we monetize this, right? How do we monetize any application? And there you can use something like Stripe. Everyone knows of Stripe where you can basically you know, allow people to, to pay a monthly subscription or one-time payment for your application. If you want to check out how to integrate that, there's a video I'm linking up right now. Go check that out. That is definitely took me a little bit to, to figure out. So it's a nice little step-by-step -step guide for you. And that is the video, everybody. I really hope it was beneficial. Uh, one last thing before I go, I want to just say over 95% of the people that watch this channel are not subscribed. So if that is you, I really am going to ask you for a favor. If you will like and subscribe, I will continue building out better and better content. It gives me an indication that people are really into this. The channel's growing nearly at a thousand subscribers. So 
please do me a favor, like and subscribe if you found this beneficial and you're getting some benefit out of it. Uh, and I can go ahead and make better and better videos for you. Alrighty, guys, I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers.